This is the Culture Community Creativity Conference. It's the culmination of the ROTA project, which is a five-year Arts Council funded programme. And we're just really hoping to get lots of people together from different organisations, cultural industries, staff, students, members of the public, to discuss and debate what's meant by cultural democracy. We're going to be hearing from Anna Suto from Nottingham Trent University, who's a researcher and a lecturer. She's going to be talking about her art and architecture projects with the local communities. We're hearing from Phil Wood who describes himself as an urban therapist. He's a writer and a researcher and an activist. We've also had a poetry reading from Simon Armitage to introduce the day. We were really keen to get some arts practitioners with local knowledge talking about their experience of Huddersfield, how it's influenced their sense of the place. We've also been hearing from Patrick Fox who is an artist working on the Heart of Glass project at St Helens who looks at the intersections of people, place and the arts. And this afternoon we're hearing from members of Kirklees Museums and Galleries as well as staff from the University of Huddersfield about collaboration, partnership working, public engagement and picking up on some of the key questions that have come out of the morning. I think we're asking the question today, how do we create the conditions for creative thinking and creative action to flourish? and therefore contribute to growth, citizenship, economic and emotional resilience. That's the core. How do we create those conditions? And I'll be delighted to um, invite the, the speakers to come and share their views on that. The reason why I started mapping Nottingham's identity um, is because I went to this conference in 2015 and it was about engagement. And again, it really resonated in, in me, this idea of engaging with the community. One of the problems we have is that once you are uh, an academic at university, there is always this perception that you're gonna go to a locality and you're gonna fix them because you know better. And I really didn't want to do that. So one of the things we did was, uh, instead of a normal questionnaire as you would do as, what is the identity of Carrington? We asked people to draw Carrington. And then Dasha compiled uh, the big map with all the detail. So how can universities support peripheral artistic activity? Um, I think we are part of the community and I think this, this distinction is, is a bit artificial and, and there are definitely mutual benefits for, for all involved. So how can artistic activity enhance sense of citizenship, ownership and belonging? You start discovering places that you had never known about, uh, you know, what is your favorite place and why it is your favorite place. So you are starting to, to challenge the notion of that identity, what people know about it, but also you're creating new memories and participation. The destination that you're trying to build. And if I ask you guys to think about it from the perspective of coming to it as a potential my name's Anna Franks, I'm the Audience Development Associate for Creative Scene and I'm here to run a workshop this afternoon with my colleague Vicky Holiday. and we're focusing on the We Are Public project which is a project that's inspired um, a recently successful funding bid in partnership with the University of Huddersfield um, that Creative Scene is going to be working on over the next couple of years. So We Are Public is an online cultural platform um, that Baz and Leon have developed in Amsterdam and it's all about how we can break down the barriers that audiences face. Predominantly, as we know, issues around time, information and money. So what they've put together is an online platform where people pay a membership fee on a monthly basis of approximately 15 euros and for that they get access to a number of free events. We believe that we need to sort of change the, the way we think about uh, arts, audiences and funding. Like there's like Leon said, when we started this, there was subsidy cuts, everybody was in panic. And we felt like, okay, if the money, if the money is sort of going away and there's big panic, there's something wrong about the system. There's an opportunity to also change that. So, and that's what we're trying to do, but it's, all, it's a sign of the times. Like it's really something that happens in energy, in food, in all segments of society. People, communities get together and support things that they think is important and that's what we're doing uh, for the arts. 
This afternoon's workshop is really about exploring how we might take the lessons learned, the model that they have, and possibly apply it as a pilot project in Yorkshire um, in creating our own curated online cultural platform that will benefit audiences, that will benefit cultural organisations, and ultimately make all of our audiences and cultural offer much more connected. To kind of summarise what's happened in the past three years in, in St Helens as a result of the kind of work of the creative community has been a very kind of dramatic re-engagement with the arts as a, as a critical space. Um, this can be demonstrated through the levels of participation and engagement of projects, but also by the adoption of, of key leaders, including the local authority, um, of, of some of the kind of challenges that we've thrown them, whether that be renaming a park or, or gifting a building or taking on children's charter. So our job really is to, is to make that mean something over the coming years. So for us really what, we're, what the questions that we ask ourselves are, you know, what kind of work will be shared in these new civic spaces that we're, we're creating, whose voices will be heard, what forms of encounter will be created between artists, communities and audiences, um, and will they even be spaces in the traditional sense? Um, there's some of the questions that I believe we should be asking ourselves and they're certainly the questions that, that we at Heart of Glass are, are asking ourselves. Our workshop is all about exploring cultural democracy and sharing some of the learning from the Fun Palace project which is all about looking at how we can get, encourage people to celebrate the arts and science and culture across the spectrum and unearthing culture that's already in communities and celebrating it and using cards as a way of provoking and, and developing a toolkit so that we can actually involve everyone. So how do we create the conditions for creative thinking and action to flourish? What are the ingredients of a reviving creative town? There's only one thing I want to talk about. Critical discourse is what we need because it's what is missing, I think, here in this town, here in this region, here in this nation and beyond. And if the arts cannot be a place of critical discourse about what is happening in our world, then we might as well give up. We need a new perspective. It's not just about saying, how are independent artists going to survive? Yes, being an artist is always going to mean that most of you are part of the precariat, and that counts me too. But we should always remember that the precariat is, ought to be, has to be the dangerous class in this country. So it's not a case now that creating more and more jobs is where we need to go. We need to create a world beyond that. That's not just for economists to do. There has to be a role for the artist. And if you talk about one thing today, I would like to hear what you've got to say, because they always say time changes things, but you have to actually change them yourself. Thank you. Thank you.